Hello, and thank you very much for coming today um, to the, the second of the presentations that I've been doing here at DCU. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 60 of us. There are 20 of us out here in Westboro and 40 in Worcester. Um, what I love about being a Myrick O'Connell uh, is that this is all I have to do because there's somebody else that can figure out everything else. Uh, I was talking to one person here who actually just finished going to a seminar of another one of my partners who was at doing labor law, which I know absolutely nothing about. So um, this, is, this is the presentation for people who didn't do any planning uh, and end up getting stuck typically with Alzheimer's and they can't figure out what to do. Um, Alzheimer's um, has become, has, not, has actually displaced cancer as the, the disease that people over 65 worry the most about. I've literally had clients say, well, I'm glad I have cancer, at least I don't have Alzheimer's, you know, because they're just concerned about this long process. And the problem with Alzheimer's from a, from a, a care perspective is that Alzheimer's is the one big disease that isn't covered by Medicare, really. Medicare, you got cancer, and Medicare will cover the chemo and the this and the that and the surgery and all this. And if you've got heart disease, we'll do transplants, we'll do this. But if you've got Alzheimer's and you need help putting on your clothes or eating, or there's some worry that you might, you know, you need a safe place, otherwise you may end up just kind of wandering around, um, Medicare won't pay for any of that. Medicare is health insurance for the old. And you get it by virtue of being old, and it covers the cost of getting better, not the cost of staying the same. So if you uh, are in a nursing home um, Medicare will only cover those nursing home days if A, you were in a hospital for at least three days so that you can show that you were sick, and B, um, the, uh, the nursing home is certifying that you're getting better, that you need the professional care there, and C, that you've been there less than 100 days. No matter what, if you've been in the nursing home for 100 days, Medicare is going to stop, which means you're either on private pay or you're on Medicaid. Mass Health, which is the term I'm going to use today, is the Massachusetts name for the Medicaid program because Medicaid, there are separate rules that apply in each of the 50 states in Medicaid because, Medic because the federal government only pays part of the Medicaid bill. The states pay the rest. So the con there are separate contracts with each state. So what I'm telling you today only applies in Massachusetts. And what we're going to talk about is so often you'll hear on the radio or whatever that you'll hear these presentations from people saying, oh, do you want to protect your assets in case you go to the nursing home? You have to get them out of your name and wait five years. And so the question is, what if you didn't get them out of your name and wait five years, and now you're in the nursing home? Now what? And that's what this presentation is about. So um, last time I was here, I introduced you to my friends Frank and Mary, whom I talk about all the time, and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And their goal, ah, see, now that's, I can always tell my clients because they get that joke. Their, their goal is to live in their house until they die and to be buried in the backyard. It's very simple. They own their, they own their house. Um, they own their home, which is worth about $300,000. He has an IRA, they have an annuity, they have bank accounts. They're not rich by any stretch of the imagination. They get $625,000. He's got Social Security of $2,000, and Mary's is $1,000, half of his. So they're like, okay, they're making $36,000 a year. They've got no mortgage, they've got no big bills. But what happens if Mary gets sick? and gets Alzheimer's and then needs nursing home care. What is going to happen with all those assets? Because as I explained, once she's in the nursing home for more than 100 days, she's on private pay unless she can qualify for MassHealth. So the short answer in that situation is that she can qualify for MassHealth almost immediately. The reason for that is while Mary, the rules say that Mary as the person in the nursing home has to show she's poor, and have assets of less than $2,000. Frank, being the spouse at home, can own the home, as long as it has an equity of less than $828,000, can have cash or cash equivalent assets in addition to that of up to $119,220, which is not nothing, um, but it's, it's less than they have. Remember the amounts that they had, um, uh, that. So, but then um, the person at home can also, can have unlimited income can have unlimited income. And, though, and so in this situation, what would I would advise Mary to do, or somebody on Mary's behalf, so the key to this is to make sure that someone has Mary's power of attorney at this point so they can sign things on her behalf. 
is to transfer all the assets to Frank, including the house. The house is therefore safe because it's worth less than $828,000. Frank's uh, cash is going to exceed that $119,220, but as long as he can convert that money into an income stream, remember he can have unlimited income. So what I would advise Frank at that point to do, the day after all the assets get transferred to him, is go buy an annuity. As long as that annuity has certain characteristics, as long as it calls for minimum monthly payments over a term that is shorter than his life expectancy, the purchase of that annuity in any amount, in any amount, is a legitimate conversion from an asset to an income stream. And remember, he can have unlimited income. So he could have a million dollars instead of $325,000 keep a hundred thousand, take all of the rest of it and go buy an annuity and the day after he does that his wife in the nursing home is going to qualify for mass health. Isn't that amazing? So everything that you've been told about every, they have to transfer all your assets out and wait five years is not true if you're married because if one of you goes to the nursing home at the last minute you can transfer everything to your spouse. There is no look back period regarding transfers between spouses. Okay. Um, and then what Frank would do in that situation, or might even want to do ahead of time, if he wanted to make sure that if he died, Mary would still be safe, because the tip typically in these asset plans, each spouse says, if I die, everything goes to the other spouse, which is the last thing you want to do if you want to protect your assets. Because if Frank dies and leaves all of his assets to Mary, and she needs nursing home care, and either she's already in the nursing home or she gets, wants to go there later, She's got a big problem because she's got way too much in assets. She'd have to spend down all of her cash and then they put a lien on her house. But what Frank can do is simply change his will to say, if I die, instead of any, everything going to my spouse, I want it to go in trust for the benefit of my spouse. He can name one or more of his children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., or anybody else for that matter, as the trustee. And if he does that, whatever assets he owns when he dies, will go into this trust with his kids as the trustees. They will have complete discretion to use this money on their mother's behalf, but don't have to, and none of those assets get counted. So that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do. But in this case, we're assuming that they didn't. Frank died. Mary now has got all the assets. Her income went up to $2,000 a month, Frank, Frank's old Social Security number. And now Mary needs nursing home care, so now what? Now what? Now what? the nursing home will typically tell you in this case is, well, you have to go spend down all of your assets. Or they'll tell you to talk to a special consultant that, that will only charge you $500 and will tell you that to prepare your Mass Health application. And that person will then tell you, oh, well, Mary can't qualify for Mass Health. She's over asset. She has to spend on all of that cash, which is true unless she does some other things. So we're going to talk about those other things that the nursing home doesn't tell you about. Um, to understand the significance of those other things, you need to understand some basic principles here. Um, if Mary is in the nursing home, either one of the Marlboro nursing homes, there are in, or any one of the ones in this area, she's going to be paying about $12,000 a month in nursing home care. Her income, you will recall, is, is, is um, $2,000 a month, right? Um, therefore, um, her actual cost of going to the nursing home, her burn rate, the amount by which she's going to have to use her savings while she's at the nursing home, is $10,000 a month. Once Mary has qualified for Mass Health, though, the ma what Mass Health pays that nursing home for the very same bed in the very same nursing home is about $7,000 a month. Now, these numbers vary for various reasons. It's too complicated to say, but these are very close to right. Which means if Mary can qualify for Mass Health by virtue of being on Mass Health, she's saving $5,000 a month. Even if that means that Mass Health is paying the nursing home this extra $5,000 a month when she's on Mass Health, and she's needing to reimburse Mass Health for that later on after she dies. So the goal of the exercise, if Mary can get on Mass Health, she saves $5,000 per month. So the question is, uh, how does she do that? So, by the way, I was just going through these numbers. The word, if, if Mary is on private pay, her burn rate on her savings is about $10,000 per month, $12,000 minus that $2,000 that she has in income. So, in the worst case, in the worst case, if Mary doesn't do these other things uh, and just stays in the nursing home and just keeps paying, she's going to spend down those $325,000 until all she has left is the house. 
That's going to last at $10,000 a month for 32.5 months, or a little less than three years. Uh, at that point, MassHealth would lien the house, qualify her for MassHealth. After she died, they'd, she'd have to reimburse MassHealth. Alternatively, she could sell the house, turn everything into cash, the worst possible case, in which case she'd have $625,000, and she'd be in the nursing home, and it would, she'd be able to be there on private pay for 62.5 months. So the question then is, how does she qualify for MassHealth? Well, to qualify for MassHealth, now Frank's dead, so all the assets are hers. She has to show that she has less than $2,000 in countable assets. Once that's true, MassHealth will, take, will require that she pay all of her income, which was about $2,000 a month, minus this very small amount, $72.80, that she gets to keep for all of her personal needs per month, $72.80. Um, and then MassHealth will pay the difference. And if, if, if Mary still has her house, MassHealth will put a lien on her house to make sure that they get reimbursed. So that's how the, kind of the system works. But the question is then, how can Mary structure her assets so that she can get on mass health, thereby reducing her burn rate from $10,000 a month on private pay to $5,000 a month if she's on mass health. There are three ways. She can buy an annuity, she can do a promissory note, or she can put the money into a D4C pooled trust. We're going to spend a lot of time on number one and number three. I'm on a little bit on number two. So what about this annuity? Remember I just talked earlier about the fact that if, 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 Mary were, if Frank was still alive and Mary had transferred all of her money to Frank, Frank could use that money to buy an annuity and therefore convert his, his asset into an income stream. Well, Mary can do the same thing. Mary can take her money and go buy an annuity from an insurance company. And as long as that annuity says that she's going to get equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than her actuarial life expectancy. That is a legitimate conversion from a countable asset to a non-countable income stream. And so Mary can qualify for mass health, right? Well, why would she do that, though? Because these payments that she's getting, together with her income, are all going to have to go to the nursing home. Because remember, once Mary has qualified for mass health, all of her income has to go to the nursing home. Well, the reason is because the nursing home bill, by virtue of her having qualified for mass health, went from $12,000 a month to $7,000 a month, right? So even though all of her money is going to the nursing home, it is going to the nursing home at, at, a, at a lower rate. Now, and let me kind of go through some of the math with you on that. Go back to Mar this case with Mary. Those are her assets, right? She has a house worth $300,000. She has cash worth about $325,000. If Mary were to take all of her funds, right? And by the way, Mary's life expectancy, if she's 80 years old, is nine years, a little over nine years. If Mary were to take all of her funds and buy an annuity with it, assuming that the annuity paid her no interest, and these annuities do pay some interest, but it's tiny, 1%, 2%. You'd never do this unless you were doing it to qualify for mass health. If, if Mary does that, though, if she goes and buys this annuity, um, it's a very long annuity, that annuity is going to pay Mary about $3,000 per month, $325,000 divided by 108. 108 is, that's nine years times the 12 months, right? It's 108 payments. So, she's, so her income now is going to increase um, to about $5,000 a month, right? Remember, she had her base income of $2,000 a month, and now her annuity pays her three, right? But remember, um, the mass health rate is, is, uh, is uh, $7,000 a month, right? Her, her total burn rate is this $5,000, right? And the way that the burn rate is going to work is that, Matt, is that w she's going to be making these payments, right, to the nursing home, and the payments are going to be about $5,000 a month, so she's paying the $5,000. And then MassHealth is going to be paying that remaining $2,000, because she's going to be on MassHealth, and she's going to owe MassHealth that money back at the end, either because Mary's going to die while the annuity is still going, uh, or she's going to die after the annuity is run out, and, then, and, and, and therefore MassHealth is going to take this money out of her house because they're going to have a lien on her house for whatever the remainder is that is owed. But in any case, her burn rate on this money is running at $5,000 a month, which means if she dies any time before 10.5 years after she started, there's going to be money left over. Now remember, if she died... On, if she, while she was doing this on private pay, having used up all of her money, her money was only going to last for five years. 
So this increases the length of time before all the money is gone. It doubles the length of time before all the money is gone, from five years to 10 years. Um, how does a promissory note work? It's very similar to an annuity, except instead of paying an annuity company or an insurance company in return for an annuity, Mary could lend all of her money to her kids, to one or more of her kids. They would have to sign a promissory note back to her. Under current regulations, this promissory note does not have to be secured by anything, right? It has to pay her back a reasonable rate of interest, which MassHealth says is the treasury rate of interest, a very, very low rate of interest, right? Has to have the same kind of terms to it that it can't be, the promissory note can't be forgiven, and the term has to be no, short, no longer than her actuarial life expectancy. Um, the, uh, we don't typically recommend this to people, um, typically, people are just nervous about the fact that they've, even the kids, that they've gotten all this money, even though they now have the ability to take this money and go invest it and do stuff with it, that they have to pay this return back to the, to the, on the promissory note. They're just nervous about it, right? Uh, also, there are some states where these have now been prohibited. This, this varies by state, and so we're concerned about these. But, but it's another way that right now is you can validly do this. So there are those two ways of causing Mary to become qualified for Mass Health right away. There is a third, the D4C pooled trust. Anybody heard of those? No. Um, no one's ever heard of these, right? You never hear about this in the ads for any of this stuff. <clears throat> a D4C pooled trust, the, the letter is D4C. By the way, if you want to learn more about this, Google pooled trust. A pooled trust is a trust that is managed by a nonprofit whose existence is for the benefit of elder or disabled people. And the point of the pooled trust is that this entity collects up money from people, pools it for investment purposes into one big pile, um, and then, but keeps track of how much money you gave them, and then uses that money together with whatever income you've earned on that money for you. Um, there are actually five of these in Massachusetts right now, so you could also, um, um, you could Google any of those. I'm giving you the, 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 uh, the website information for Plan of Massachusetts. That's the one that we use the most. Now, once you've given the money to the pooled trust, this money can be used and will be used by the trustee, they're required to use it, for anything that Mary needs. Anything that Mary needs, right? So she's in the nursing home, but cannot be used um, to pay the nursing home bill. Will not be used to pay the nursing home bill, right? The transfer of the money to the pooled trust is a legitimate transfer that therefore reduces Mary's assets down below the magic $2,000 and qualifies her for mass health. So the money can be used, among other things, to buy better furniture for Mary in the nursing home. You know, instead of the standard issue bed that she's got there, right? Or instead of the little crummy TV, right? She can buy her own plasma screen, anything she wants. The most important one, though, as I always refer to, is the wheelchair. You go to the nursing home, the most depressing thing about being in a nursing home, I go to nursing homes a lot. Has anybody here been to a nursing home? Yeah, okay, so you know, so you go into the, there's the hall, and there are people sitting there, and they're like this, right? Right, and they're, right, awful. Now, one of the reasons for that is because they're sitting in a wheelchair that wasn't designed to sleep in, right? They're sitting in the standard issue mass, or nursing home wheelchair that was designed to transport somebody. It's got that soft back, it's got the little aluminum arms, from one room to another. And that wheelchair costs like $800, right? For like $7,000, $8,000, you can buy a wheelchair, it re big thick cushions and it reclines, you can even get a motorized, get a TV set, little holder for your drink, you know. So, and, and it's, that's really important, right? Because if you're in a nursing home, you don't wanna be in bed all day, and neither does the staff because of bed sores and stuff, you wanna be up, right, and around, right? And this becomes where you live, is in this, is in this ideally wonderful wheelchair, right? which Mass Health won't pay for, but which the D4C will. Or suppose you've got, suppose Mary is actually in, in, in well, the reason why I have my lobster here is just my, I've used this story before. But. So I had a person that I did one of these presentations for, and at the end said, well, Mr. Bergeron, I really, you know, I really don't, I can't, I don't think we should do this. I mean, you know, my mother had like $200,000, but she only has 60,000 left. Um, and I said, well, you know, $60,000 in the real world is a lot of money, right? In the nursing home world, it's only five months worth of care at $12,000 a pop, but in the real world, that's a lot of money. And I said, if you do this, you'll have this pile of money that for your mo the rest of your mother's life, she can use for any kind of extra stuff. So she said, oh, well, that's not a bad idea. So she did, right? 
we moved everything to the D4C, the mother immediately qualified for Mass Health. The social worker from the D4C, from the plan of Massachusetts, came out to talk to her and her mother, but her mother was like 95 and really in pretty bad shape, so she was really talking to her. She said, so what is your mother like doing? Like, does she like watching TV? Because you know, we can get her a flat screen TV in the, in the headphones, and that way she doesn't have to listen to the neighbor's TV. The worst part about being in the nursing home is listening to the neighbor's TV, right? We can be great. She said, well, actually, she's blind. Oh, well, that, that's out. So how about music? Does she like music? We can get her a CD player and all kinds of great you know, Bose speakers and all these wonderful things. Well, actually, she's deaf, too. So the lady said, well, does your mother have any like, favorite foods that she really likes? And the daughter said, well, you know, we grew up poor. You know, we never had a lot of money. My dad worked. My mother took care of all the kids. But a couple times a year, they would save up and we would go out for lobster, the whole family. My mother loved lobster. And the lady just turned and said, your mother can have lobster every day from now on, right? So this, this woman lived for another three years and had lobster a lot during those three years, right? And why not? It was her money. She saved for it all of her life, right? And now she gets to use some of her own money, right, for, for, to have some tough times. Now, just two other examples. If it, uh, many of the Marys in this world who are in nursing homes are still mentally pretty aware, I don't want to say many, 20, 30 percent of the folks in nursing homes, but just physically can't get around. So for those folks, they might want to go on a trip. You know, not that they could live there constantly, but they might want to go on a trip to the Cape or to Florida, wherever you want. D4C will pay the whole thing. D4C will pay the person who's going with Mary to go with her. That's a legitimate expense. Somebody has to go with her, right? We'll do whatever you want. Home maintenance. Remember, Mary has a house. So you put the money in the D4C. Once Mary's qualified for mass health, her income can no longer be used to take care of the house, right? All has to go to the nursing home. Taxes, insurance, repairs. There's no money to take care of the house. Now, from the D4C, you can take care of the house, right? So the D4C has a lot of uses. The only, so why wouldn't you just put all the money in the D4C then instead of going through all of this annuity stuff? That's why. Because one of the provisions of having money in the D4C is that when Mary dies, depending on how long the money's been in the D4C, the D4C is entitled to, to a percentage of that money. Typically about 20% of the money after two years. It doesn't get higher than 20%. But it doesn't get much lower either, right? So uh, in Mary's case, um, just to kind of, once again, do the numbers. Remember the, the her mass health rate is, is $7,000 per month. The burn rate is $5,000 per month, right? The amount of cash that she would have left, right, after, once again, I'm just trying to calculate how long this money would last, right? The amount of cash that she would have left if she had put all the money in the D4C is really not $325,000, which was how much she had, but only 80% of that amount because when she dies, the D4C is going to keep 20%. So she really ends up with only $260,000 at that rate, given that burn rate of $5,000 a month, all of the money gets exhausted in 4.3 years, so right? So they take 20% off immediately? Off the top. As soon as you put it in, they take 20% nope. off? No, when she dies. When so she if you use, of what's left. Of what's left. So okay. if you use all the money, okay. so if you use all the money, right. that's okay. Oh, okay. If there's no money left at the end, they get 20% of $2, mm -hmm. whatever it is, right? Yeah. So they get their chunk, and then MassHealth has a lien on the rest. So once again, this is not a way of escaping completely from paying for mass health. The goal of the exercise is to qualify for mass health, thereby reducing the burn rate from $10,000 to $5,000 per month. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the basic, so, that, so you get these two vehicles, right? And each one has kind of some advantages and some disadvantages. Often, the right solution here is some kind of blend of the two of them, right? So the ideal amount for you to be generating through the annuity, right, is the, just in terms of just helping you make the math easier, is the amount that together with Mary's income is gonna pay the nursing home bill every month, right? Because if, if you had, if the nursing home bill is $2,000, if the nursing home bill is $7,000 a month and Mary's regular income is $2,000 a month, the perfect amount to have the annuity be is $5,000 a month so that every month the nursing home is getting everything that they're owed, which means there is no accumulating mass health lien. 
because the mass health lien is only for the amount that mass health pays, right? And I know this sounds like a shell game. Well, where did the money go? Well, basically, the money that the loss gets taken by the nursing home. This is why the nursing home never wants you to qualify for mass health, right? And by the way, just in parentheses, oh, what, what time is it? Am I okay on time? It's about 12, about 1.30? Yes. Okay, so in parentheses, um, the, people will all, often say to me, well, you know, but I don't want them to qualify for mass health because, you know, they're not, she's not going to get a good bed at a nursing home. All nursing homes take mass health. 70 to 80 percent of all beds in all nursing homes are mass health beds, right? And in terms of care, I, I have heard anecdotally people get better care in the mass health beds than they do in the other beds unless you're visiting a lot because, because mass health sends in investigators undercover to be seeing how people are being treated. And if you get a bad score from mass health, your, your nursing homes you know more mass health, which means you're out of business. You're out of business. So they're very concerned about how the mass health people are being treated, okay? So it may be that you decide that you want to do some kind of blend. You want to buy an annuity with some of the money, and then with the remainder of the money, you put it in the D4C. So for example, once again, if, assume that your burn rate is $5,000 per month. Um, uh, um, if you took the amount that it would take you to produce that $5,000 a month, right, for four years, I just picked four years, nothing special about four years, is $240,000. Remember, Mary has $325,000. So one possibility is she could buy this annuity, a four-year annuity that would pay $5,000 a month, which together with her income of $2,000 will 100% pay the nursing home, and then take the remainder, which is uh, someplace, $85,000, put that in the D4C. Now, that is probably going to be plenty of money to take care of all of Mary's needs at the nursing home, and probably enough money on the side to pay for the taxes on the house and the insurance and this other stuff, right? And then, at the end of the day, if Mary dies the next day after you've done all of this stuff and gotten her on mass health, your only loss as a result of putting the money in the D4C is that 20% of that smaller number of the $85,000. So there, there are kind of, an, there's an infinite number of possibilities in using those two vehicles. I just want you to know that they're both available. They can both cause Mary to qualify for Mass Health. The question is going to be, what's your individual case? Among other things, what's Mary's estimated life expectancy? If it's really, really short, then you may not be wanting to take the risk of a big D4C hit, right? You may be deciding to do the annuity. If it's really long, you may want to put a lot more money in the D4C because you may want to take care of her, right? Um, or if she's got a lot of needs. If she's still really healthy, so that you may really want to use the D4C money for her to travel, to do whatever, then you want to put a lot of money there. If she's like my friend's mother, who was 96 years old and, and blind and deaf, uh, you don't need as much money, you know? So you want to think about that. Now I'm just going to give you a couple of other examples how you might want to think this out differently. So suppose Mary's assets, instead of being the house plus 325000 was just the house plus $75,000, and her income were only $2,000 a month. Well, in that situation, you may decide, you're going to, maybe you're going to, especially if you think she's going to live for a while, maybe you just want to park all that cash immediately in the D4C. Don't the, do the annuity at all, right? Know that there's going to be a lien on the house. But once again, by, by taking those steps, you've, you've, you've reduced your burn rate from $10,000 to $5,000, because the lien is only going to accrue on the house at the rate of $5,000 a month, right? We talked about that. Uh, now I want to talk about some other examples. What if Mary, no, first I'm just going to talk about this and I'll give you why it applies. So you've all heard about the five-year look back rule. That's what most people know about all this stuff. Oh, you have to take all your assets and transfer them all out and wait five years. But that five-year look back rules may still be relevant to Mary even though she didn't do it yet. Because the five years isn't five years from the day you transfer to the day you go to the nursing home. It's from the day you transfer to the day you apply for Mass Health. So it may be in certain situations that Mary, instead of doing the, any of the other things that we just talked about, should transfer all of her assets out the day she gets to the nursing home and wait five years and then apply for Mass Health. So what happens if she does that? Well, you know that the burn rate on her money is um, $10,000 per month, right? 12,000 minus two which means it's going to cost, this strategy costs Mary $600,000. Well, why in the world would she want to do that? 
Well, she wouldn't if her assets were only $600,000, which was the other case. But what if her assets are a million one? What if she has a little bit bigger house? What if, this is not an uncommon situation. I'm amazed, and people themselves are amazed to find out that they're millionaires, that they've got a house that went up in value and an IRA or a 401k that kind of piled up on them and all of a sudden they got money. Especially if they had a place on the Cape that they bought for 50 and is now worth four, you know? So in that situation, if Mary simply goes on private pay for the five years, at the end, she's paid her $600,000, then she applies for Mass Health, she saved the other $525,000. Now that's not a million one, but it's not nothing either, right? And remember, if Mary, had, if Mary had used my Mass Health strategies and had gotten on Mass Health, at the end of these five years, she's still, the, the lien is still increasing. She saved some money during the five years, but the five, at the end of the five years, if she lives for 10 years, then MassHealth is gonna be entitled at the end of the 10 years to, for 10 years worth of the payments that they had made. To give you a sense of that, you know, during, as we talked about, on private pay, uh, she burns through $600,000 worth of money. If she goes on MassHealth using the strategies that we talked about, therefore, and therefore reduces, the lien, it reduces her cost from $10,000 to $5,000, at the, end of six, at the end of five years, she's burned through $300,000 worth of money, right? The rest of it remains. So that at the end of five years, in Mary's case, it, may, it would have made sense to do this. It would have made sense, even though she had a million one, to have taken the strategy of doing the, D4, the D4C plus the annuity, because she would have saved, three, she would have reduced her total burn rate from, from $600,000 down to $300,000. Mary lived 10 years though, right? If she had a really long remaining life expectancy, that would not be the case because that lien amount would have kept growing. Whereas the, the, the 600,000, that just freezes. At the end of the five years, you're all done, right? You're on mass health and all the rest of the money is safe. So now that's an un, kind of an unlikely case here, right? And therefore, if you've got a person who's 85, 90 years old, you may figure it makes more sense to qualify for mass health in her situation. But what about this? Suppose Mary had those same assets, but suppose her income were 4,000 a month instead of 2,000 a month. Now that's, that's an unusual figure, but not an exceptional figure. I mean, I don't, less than 50% of folks who are over 65 make that kind of money, but people who are retired teachers, a lot of retired government employees, right? People who got a pension from their spouse, plus, they were a teacher or they got a good size pen. That, if, so if you've got a big income, right, then this really changes this equation, right? And suppose you had long-term care insurance, right? Now nobody typically, when people talk to me about buying long-term care insurance, typically it makes no sense to buy long-term care insurance. No sense, right? To buy any kind of large policy because even a very big policy is not gonna be near enough to cover what the nursing home cost is, right? But suppose she owned that policy, $200 a day for five years, right? So that's $6,000 a month. So now her private pay is 12,000, her income is now $10,000 a month. Remember her base was four and then she's got the long-term care insurance for six, which means her burn rate is only $2,000 a month. So at the end of the five years, she's only burned through $120,000. So if she, takes all of her $625,000 and immediately transfers it out to her kids, right? Five years, and lives five, all five years, right? The end of that five years, she's only paid the nursing home on private pay $120,000 and everything else is safe. So in that situation, she does better by paying on private pay and getting the assets out of her name than she did by, by shifting things around originally and qualifying for mass health. Because remember, if she did the shifting, she saved 300,000 after five years. Here she saves, um, or, or here she only has to pay, or she paid out 300,000 after five years. Here she only pays 120. Um, once again, 625, that's what she started with, minus that 120 that she paid. So she's actually saving, in this case, the $505,000, right? Not bad. Um, a couple of other things, a couple of other options other than all of this. It's just that I save these for the end because they don't apply to a lot of people. Caregiver child. If one of Mary's children has been living in the house for at least two years prior to the day that she goes to the nursing home, 
and during that period has been giving her the kind of care that her doctor or nurse will certify was keeping her from going to a nursing home, at the end of those two years, Mary can give the house to the child, just no matter what the house is worth. Okay? Um, they have to be living there, though, and, and, the, and there, it used to be that all you needed was kind of a doctor's note, and, and people would, the mass health doesn't go for the doctor's note anymore. You really need to be able to document that Mary, Mary's physical condition or mental condition during those two years was such that she was going to need the nursing home and that this child was providing those services. They have to really be there. Um, the other thing is long-term care insurance in a different context. I talked to you about the long-term care insurance the kind of larger policy, $200 a day for five years, um, that's a fairly expensive policy in terms of premium. But there's also the special discount policy. If you have, if you, got, if you bought a policy, if you're married and you bought a policy prior to March 15th, 1999, and if it said that the, that the, that the, that the nursing home would be paid at least $50 a day, for 730 days, two years, right? After an elimination period of no more than 100 days, that is the first 100 days that policy didn't have to pay. Um, and if you go to the nursing home directly from home, and at the time you go to the nursing home for that last time where you're applying for Mass Health, there's at least one day left on that policy, right? And this actually is a mistake. If you say in your mass health application that you do not intend to go home, that you do not intend to go home, then as a result of having that policy, um, your house is safe. There is no lien on the house. It's not a countable asset. There's no claim on the house after you die. The house is completely safe. But that's a really old policy, right? Well, after that though, as long as you have a policy that says that you get at least 125 days or $125 per day paid to the nursing home, and the elimination period can be up to a year, the day before which the policy has to start paying can be up to a year. So for, for insurance carrier purposes, that really keeps the premium down because they know there's a reasonable likelihood that even if you go to the nursing home, they're never gonna have to pay because most people die in the nursing home fairly soon, right? As long as you have that policy and you have at least one day left on that policy, um, the house is safe, no matter what the value of the house, no matter what the value. I do a lot of, a, a lot of work in Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket, right? So Nantucket, you can't buy a house for less than $500,000, right? There's the, a lot of average houses in the center of town are a million, two million dollars. Little houses, 1,200, 1,400 square foot houses. Unbelievable. So I tell people, 100% of the people in Nantucket ought to buy these policies. Now, they're hard to get, can't buy them at the last minute. At this point, you really can't buy them once you're over 70. You're never going to get a policy, right? But if you can, and you're in this kind of situation where you figure, ah, I'll take a roll of the dice on the cash, but my house, I really want to save my house for the kids. Oftentimes, they'll say that, right? I really want to save my house for the kids. Then this makes a lot of sense. I'll also mention that in that situation, in that situation, the premium should be getting paid by the kids, right? When you're doing this, you're doing nothing for yourself, right? You are, at the point at which this policy is kicking in, you're not going back home, right? You have to say that you're not going back home, right? This is totally to save the house for the kids. So why shouldn't they be paying the premium? This is 100% about them. And I've told people that, you know, because many of my clients, you know, they've got this house that's accumulated and they've got some cash, but their income is really low because they're like social security or a little pension. And I'll say, so, you know, why do you have to pay this premium? You know, your children are going to inherit a house that's worth, what, three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars? And all they have to do is pay this little premium and they can guarantee they're going to get the house. Right? And so actually, kids, I've actually had some kids that have sucked it up, you know, and said, we get it. This makes a lot of sense. Um, finally, we talked about this, the wills and asset protection trusts. If you're both, if you're married, that's the right answer. That is the correct answer. Have that in place so that you never find yourself married with a lot of assets. And always make sure that you have a power of attorney. Well, I've had this happen, that I can do all these great things for you as long as the person in the nursing home has given somebody the ability to transfer assets on their behalf, right? But if they haven't, then I have to get a conservator appointed. 
and I get to get a court order to allow any transfers out of that person's name. And the judge may not give it to me. There are some judges who will say as a matter of public policy that they will not agree to shift assets from Mary to Frank in this case so that Mary can get on Mass Health. And you're stuck. Whereas all you need, all you have to do is make sure you have a power of attorney and that problem goes away. Finally, that's Frank and Mary. That's their YouTube channel. If you got any questions, this presentation and about a hundred others that I've done are on that YouTube channel. Um, and that's also our website. Any questions? And that's the goal of life. Sleep well at night. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time.